evacuation. The work is to be carried out on a complete refrigeration system, i.e. condensing unit connected to an evaporator. Connections for carrying out the procedure are on the condensing unit. B-Maxipro fittings are used in the suction and liquid lines. The following tools and equipment are required. A two-stage vacuum pump. Two-port electronic gauge manifold set and hoses. Vacuum gauge. Adjustable spanner and Allen key. The engineer should be wearing work clothing, long sleeves, safety boots and safety goggles. The area should be open and well ventilated. This short video demonstrates evacuation of a system to remove non-condensable gases and moisture. If you watch the short videos on pressure testing, you will know that they demonstrated pressure testing of the whole suction pipework. In this video we evacuate the whole system. We are using a two-stage vacuum pump as this is the most effective way to carry out a single deep evacuation. Its size needs to suit the volume of the system you are evacuating. Typically, the larger the better. We are using a digital vacuum gauge to measure the vacuum in the system. This is the only accurate way to check that an adequate vacuum has been achieved and held. To achieve the best possible system, the vacuum pump should be as large as possible, be in good condition and be charged with clean oil. There should be a minimal pressure drop between the pump and the system. To achieve this, use short hoses and ensure there are no restrictions in the connections and hoses. Evacuation will be more effective the warmer the system is, in particular the compressor oil. Ensure there are no isolated sections of pipe you will usually need to open solenoid valves using a permanent magnet. The vacuum pump will be connected to the high and low side of the system at the condensing unit. The vacuum achieved in the system will be measured at the connection in the condensing unit. Ensure the condensing unit valves are closed. Connect the high and low pressure hoses to these valves. Open the valves and check that the system pressure is 0 bar. It is possible that nitrogen from the pressure test has leaked into the condensing unit. In this case, vent the nitrogen before connecting the vacuum pump. Connect the common line onto the vacuum pump. Connect the vacuum gauge to the Schrader valve in the condensing unit. You need to measure the vacuum as far from the pump as possible to get a true vacuum reading. In our system, we have a connection on the condensing unit. Many systems will have a suitable connection at the evaporator. Start the vacuum pump and then slowly open the manifold valves. You would typically aim to achieve a vacuum of better than 2000 microns. The time it takes to reach this level will depend on the system size, your vacuum pump and the condition of the system. The reading on the vacuum gauge connected to the system is the only accurate method of knowing you have achieved the required vacuum. If you can't achieve the required vacuum, there are a number of possible reasons. Your vacuum pump is not big enough, is not in good condition or is not charged with clean oil. There is a leak between the pump and the system or in the system although a system leak should have been identified during the tightness testing. There is moisture or gas still in the system. You would expect the pressure to rise faster in a smaller system. We have now achieved a vacuum of less than 2000 microns. The manifold valves are now closed and the pump is switched off. We now check that the vacuum holds. If the pressure rises significantly, this usually indicates that there is still moisture in the system or there is a leak. If the evacuation process has identified a leak in the system, you must find this and repair it before charging. You will need to strength and tightness test your repair and evacuate again first. The system is now ready to be charged with refrigerant so everything can remain connected to the system ready for charging. There is a short video which demonstrates the charging procedure.